Ethan Cole's hands trembled slightly as he adjusted his camera, a sleek black device perched precariously on a tripod. The room around him was dimly lit, the only illumination coming from the soft glow of his computer screen and a few scattered LED lights. His heart raced with a mix of excitement and apprehension, a familiar sensation before every stream, but tonight felt different. Tonight, he was venturing into uncharted territory. All right, everyone, he said, his voice steady despite the flutter of nerves. Tonight's the night. We're heading into Mercy Hospital. The chat box on his screen exploded with messages from eager viewers. His audience loved his urban explorations, tuning in religiously to watch him navigate through the forgotten and the abandoned. They were thrill-seekers by proxy, living vicariously through Ethan's daring escapades. He adjusted his headset, the cool metal pressing against his temples, and took a deep breath. Mercy Hospital, he continued leaning closer to the camera, has been abandoned for over two decades. It's got a pretty dark history, fires, mysterious deaths, and of course, ghost stories. Perfect for a little midnight adventure, right? He flashed a grin, though his stomach churned. Ethan had done his research. The hospital had once been a bustling medical facility, a beacon of hope in a sprawling city. But a tragic fire had gutted its east wing, claiming the lives of several patients and staff. The survivors moved on, but whispers of restless spirits and unexplained phenomena kept the building cloaked in an air of malevolence. Remember to like and share the stream, he said, his voice taking on the practiced tone of a seasoned content creator. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on what we find tonight. With the preliminaries out of the way, Ethan double-checked his gear, flashlight, backup batteries, a compact first aid kit, and his trusty multi-tool. He strapped a portable camera to his chest, ensuring his viewers would have a first-person perspective of the night's journey. He glanced at the chat one last time, heartened by the flood of encouragement and warnings to stay safe. Outside, the night was cool and crisp, the city's ambient noise fading as he drove towards the outskirts. The route took him through a labyrinth of narrow streets, each turn bringing him closer to the hulking silhouette of Mercy Hospital. As he approached, the building loomed larger, its shattered windows and crumbling facade barely visible in the moonlight. Ethan parked his car a few blocks away, preferring to approach on foot to avoid attracting attention. The neighborhood was eerily quiet, the silence punctuated only by the distant wail of a siren and the occasional rustle of leaves. He walked briskly, the weight of his backpack pressing reassuringly against his shoulders. There it is, he whispered to his viewers as the hospital came into full view. Mercy Hospital, abandoned and supposedly haunted. Let's see if we can find out why. Ethan stood before the hulking, decaying mass of Mercy Hospital, its silhouette jagged and imposing against the twilight sky. His breath fogged in the cool evening air as he adjusted his camera and checked his gear one last time. The excitement and nervousness crackled through him, a familiar rush he had come to crave. He turned to his viewers, flashing a confident grin. The main entrance was boarded up, but Ethan had already scouted alternative ways in. He circled the building, the beam of his flashlight cutting through the darkness, until he found a partially open window on the ground floor. With a final glance around to ensure he was alone, he hoisted himself up and slipped inside. All right, folks. Tonight we're diving into the heart of one of the most notorious abandoned places in the city, Mercy Hospital. Buckle up, because this is going to be one hell of a ride. Immediately the air changed. The musty scent of decay and neglect assaulted his senses, mingling with the faintest hint of antiseptic, a ghostly remnant of the hospital's former life. Dust motes danced in the flashlight's beam as he scanned the room. It appeared to be a reception area, long abandoned with broken chairs and a collapsed desk littering the floor. All right, guys, we're in, Ethan said, keeping his voice low. Let's take a look around. He panned the camera slowly across the foyer, capturing the derelict reception desk, the peeling paint, and the tattered remnants of old posters. This place has been abandoned for over 20 years, he narrated, his voice hushed. Rumor has it, it's haunted by the spirits of those who died in a tragic fire. Let's see if we can find any truth to those stories. He moved cautiously, narrating his observations for the stream. The walls were covered in graffiti, some of it recent, 
some faded with time. Papers and medical records lay scattered across the floor, their edges yellowed and brittle. Each step echoed in the cavernous space, a reminder of the building's emptiness. As Ethan ventured deeper, the flashlight flickered, casting long, dancing shadows that seemed to move of their own accord. He shook it, muttering under his breath, and the light stabilised. He turned a corner and entered a long hallway, the darkness stretching ahead like an open moor. Looks like this place has seen better days, he joked, trying to lighten the mood. His viewers responded with a mix of laughter and nervous emojis, their collective unease palpable through the screen. The hallway branched off into various rooms, each a snapshot of the hospital's decline. An old gurney lay overturned in one room, its rusted wheels squeaking as Ethan nudged it with his foot. In another, a wheelchair sat abandoned, a single moth-eaten blanket draped over its back. Ethan's mind wandered back to the stories he'd read. The fire that had sealed the hospital's fate was said to have started in the East Wing, though the exact cause remained unknown. Some claimed it was an accident, while others whispered of something more sinister, a disgruntled employee, a vengeful spirit. He shivered involuntarily, the weight of the building's history pressing down on him. He paused at the entrance to what appeared to be a surgical ward. The door creaked ominously as he pushed it open, revealing a room filled with rusted medical equipment and overturned trays. The centerpiece was an old operating table, its surface stained and worn, a stark reminder of the lives once saved, or lost, here. This is where things get interesting, Ethan murmured, panning the camera slowly across the room. Imagine the stories these walls could tell. As he moved deeper into the hospital, the oppressive silence was punctuated by the occasional drip of water and the skittering of unseen creatures. The narrow beam of his flashlight revealed glimpses of a once functional hospital now frozen in time. Gurneys left in the hallways, a wheelchair tipped on its side, and medical charts scattered like fallen leaves. Ethan's heart pounded in his chest, each step a struggle against the primal urge to turn and flee. He reminded himself of his purpose, facing his fears, captivating his audience, and uncovering the mysteries hidden in the shadows. He pushed open a door marked, Intensive Care Unit. Inside, the remains of the ICU were a chilling sight. Monitors, long dead, hung from the walls like hollow eyes. Beds were left in disarray, some still bearing the brittle yellowed sheets of their last occupants. Ethan felt a shiver run down his spine as he imagined the chaos that must have ensued during the fire. Suddenly, a loud clang echoed from down the corridor, freezing him in place. He turned the camera towards the source of the noise, his flashlight trembling in his hand. Did you guys hear that? He whispered to his viewers. It sounded like it came from the surgical wing. Summoning his courage, Ethan moved towards the noise. The hallway stretched out before him, each step heavier than the last. As he approached the surgical wing, he noticed a change in the air, colder, more oppressive. The entrance to the wing was blocked by a heavy rusted door, slightly ajar. He squeezed through the gap, entering the surgical wing with a mixture of dread and anticipation. The surgical wing was a labyrinth of corridors and operating rooms, each more unsettling than the last. He shone his flashlight into one of the rooms, the beam revealing rusted surgical tools, overturned tables, and the eerie outline of an operating light casting long shadows on the walls. Ethan's breath quickened as he stepped inside, the floor creaking under his weight. He turned to his viewers again, his voice a tense whisper. This is where they performed surgeries. Imagine the lives that were saved here, and those that weren't. If there are any spirits here, this is where we're likely to find them. As he moved deeper into the room, his foot caught on something. He looked down to see a surgical mask, old and brittle, lying among the debris. He picked it up, holding it to the camera. A relic of the past, he murmured. Just one of many stories this place holds. A sudden movement in his peripheral vision made him whip around, his flashlight beam dancing wildly. He caught a glimpse of something, a shadow, a figure. It was gone before he could focus on it. His heart raced, his mind struggling to rationalize what he had seen. Did you see that? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Something just moved over there. Gathering his nerves, he followed the direction of the movement, his steps cautious and deliberate. 
The corridor narrowed, the walls closing in around him. He could feel the weight of the building's history pressing down, each step echoing with the memories of the past. He reached a junction and paused, listening. The silence was almost deafening, broken only by his own ragged breathing. He turned left, moving towards what appeared to be a nurse's station. The area was cluttered with old files, broken equipment, and the faint remnants of lives once lived. As he explored further, a sudden noise made him freeze, a soft shuffling sound coming from the corridor behind him. His heart pounded in his chest as he turned, the flashlight casting frantic beams of light. For a moment, he saw nothing, just the empty hallway stretching into darkness. Did you guys hear that? He whispered urgently to his viewers. The chat exploded with confirmations and suggestions to investigate. With cautious steps, Ethan retraced his path, ears straining to catch any further sounds. The hospital seemed to hold its breath, the oppressive silence even more unnerving than the noise. He moved towards the source of the sound, flashlight and camera ready, every sense on high alert. And then he saw it, a flicker of movement at the end of the corridor. His breath caught as a shadowy figure darted out of sight, vanishing into one of the rooms. He swallowed hard, adrenaline surging through his veins. Okay, guys, he said, voice trembling with a mix of fear and excitement. I don't think we're not alone in here. The chat was a blur of messages, his viewers urging him to be careful, to find out who or what was sharing the hospital with him. Ethan took a deep breath and moved forward, ready to uncover the secrets of Mercy Hospital, no matter the cost. Then he saw it, evidence of recent human activity. A makeshift bed made from old blankets and pillows was tucked into a corner. Empty cans and food wrappers littered the floor. Ethan's pulse quickened as he realized he was not alone. Guys, it looks like someone's been living here, he whispered to the camera. I don't know who or why, but this just got a lot more dangerous. He turned to leave, but a figure emerged from the shadows blocking his path. Ethan's flashlight illuminated the gaunt, angry face of Paul Morgan. The man's eyes were wild, his expression a mix of fear and aggression. Who are you? What are you doing here? Paul demanded, his voice rough and threatening. Ethan raised his hand in a placating gesture. I'm just exploring, man. I didn't mean to intrude. I'll leave right now. But Paul's eyes narrowed, suspicion and desperation etched into his features. You think you can just waltz in here and spy on us? This is all we got, and we've got nothing left to lose. Before Ethan could respond, a woman and a younger man appeared behind Paul. Sarah and Danny, their faces twisted with the same mix of fear and hostility. Ethan's mind raced, trying to find a way out of the escalating situation. Please, I don't want any trouble. Ethan said, backing away slowly. I'll leave, I swear. Paul took a menacing step forward. Too late for that. You've seen too much. You ain't leaving here. With his heart hammering in his chest, Ethan turned and bolted, his flashlight beam bouncing erratically as he sprinted down the corridor. The sounds of pursuit followed close behind, the Morgan family's desperate shouts echoing through the decaying halls. Ethan's mind raced as he navigated the maze-like structure, his knowledge of urban exploration his only advantage. He had to find a way out before it was too late. The hospital, once a place of healing, had become a labyrinth of terror, and his only hope was to outwit his pursuers and escape the shadows of Mercy Hospital. Ethan's heart pounded like a drumbeat in the silence of the abandoned hospital. His breath came in shallow gasps as he faced the Morgan family, their eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and hostility in the dim light of his flashlight. Paul, the patriarch, loomed like a bear, his grizzled face contorted in a scowl that could curdle milk. Sarah, his wife, stood beside him, her gaze sharp as a knife, assessing Ethan with a calculating stare. And then there was Danny, their son, a young man on the edge of adulthood, with a wildness in his eyes that sent shivers down Ethan's spine. For a moment, the only sound was the distant drip-drip of water echoing through the desolate corridors. Ethan's mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation, trying to find a way out of this encounter unscathed. Who are you? Paul's voice rumbled like thunder, his fists clenched at his sides. What are you doing here? Ethan swallowed hard, 
his mouth suddenly dry. I... I'm just exploring. He stammered, trying to keep his voice steady. I didn't know anyone was here. Sarah stepped forward, her gaze piercing. You think we're stupid? You think we don't know what you're up to? Ethan took a cautious step back, his heart hammering against his ribcage. No, no, I swear I didn't mean any harm. I was just curious. Paul's eyes narrowed, suspicion etched into every line of his weathered face. Curious, huh? You think you can just waltz in here and poke around without any consequences? Danny shifted restlessly, his eyes flicking between Ethan and his parents. Maybe we should just get rid of him, Pa. He's seen too much. A cold chill ran down Ethan's spine at the mention of being got rid of. He knew he had to tread carefully if he wanted to make it out of this encounter alive. Please. Ethan pleaded, his voice barely above a whisper. I'll leave. I promise. Just let me go. But Paul wasn't convinced. He took a menacing step forward, his shadow swallowing Ethan whole. You're not going anywhere, he growled, his voice low and dangerous. Not until we're sure you ain't coming back. Ethan's mind raced, searching for an escape route, a way to outsmart the Morgans and make a break for freedom. But with every passing second, the walls of the hospital seemed to close in around him, trapping him in a nightmare from which there might be no waking. As the tension in the air thickened like fog, Ethan knew that his fate hung in the balance, and that the next few moments would determine whether he walked away from this encounter or became just another ghost haunting the halls of Mercy Hospital. Now sensing no other recourse, Ethan mentally plots he means of escape, slowly taking small steps backwards as he maintains eye contact with the menacing figure that stands before him. Then, in one swift movement, Ethan turned away from the vexed Morgan family and sprinted into the darkness of the hospital. Ethan's heart hammered in his chest, echoing through the empty corridors like a drumbeat of impending doom. Darkness enveloped him like a suffocating cloak, broken only by the feeble beam of his flashlight. Every step he took echoed through the desolate halls, each creak of the floorboards a warning of his presence. As he moved cautiously through the labyrinthine corridors of Mercy Hospital, Ethan's senses were on high alert. Every shadow seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. Every flicker of movement sent shivers down his spine. He knew the Morgans were close behind, their footsteps echoing like the ominous drumming of fate. With each turn, Ethan found himself faced with a new obstacle. Crumbling walls threatened to trap him, while debris littered the floor, waiting to betray his presence with the slightest sound. But Ethan pressed on, fueled by adrenaline and the desperate need to escape. Suddenly, a distant noise shattered the silence, sending Ethan into a panic. Was it the Morgans? Or is something far more sinister, lurking in the shadows? He dared not linger to find out, pressing forward with renewed urgency. As he rounded a corner, Ethan stumbled upon a room bathed in an eerie glow. Moonlight filtered through broken windows, casting twisted shadows upon the decaying walls. It was a scene straight out of a nightmare and Ethan's pulse quickened at the sight. But there was no time to admire the macabre beauty of the scene. The Morgans were closing in, their voices growing louder with each passing moment. Ethan knew he had to act fast if he wanted to survive. With a quick glance around the room, Ethan spotted a narrow ventilation shaft, barely large enough to squeeze through. It was a risky move, but he had no other choice. With a surge of determination, he dove headfirst into the darkness the sound of his pursuers fading into the distance behind him. For what felt like an eternity, Ethan crawled through the cramped confines of the ventilation shaft, his muscles screaming with exertion. Sweat dripped down his brow, mingling with the grime and dust that coated his skin. But still he pressed on, driven by the desperate need to escape. Finally, after what seemed like hours, Ethan emerged from the ventilation shaft, <sighs> gasping for breath. He found himself in a long-forgotten hallway, the walls lined with rusted gurneys and shattered medical equipment. It was a haunting sight, a grim reminder of the hospital's tragic past. But there was no time to dwell on the horrors of the past. The Morgans were still out there, lurking in the darkness, waiting to pounce. With a renewed sense of purpose, Ethan pressed forward, determined to outwit his pursuers and emerge from Mercy Hospital alive. Ethan's breath echoed in the stagnant air of the abandoned hospital, 
his heart pounding like a relentless drumbeat in his chest. The dim glow of his flashlight cast eerie shadows on the peeling walls as he cautiously made his way through the labyrinthine corridors. Every creak of floorboards and rustle of debris sent shivers down his spine, his senses heightened to the point of near hysteria. Finding himself in an old operating room, Ethan let out a sigh of relief, though it was drowned out by the steady hum of his racing pulse. He leaned against the cold metal operating table, his hands trembling as he fumbled to replace the batteries in his flashlight. The feeble light flickered to life once more, casting a feeble glow across the room. Okay, okay, he muttered to himself, his voice barely above a whisper. Just gotta keep it together. He pulled out his phone, the screen illuminated by the soft glow of the flashlight. With shaking fingers, he began to update his viewers, his words strained and urgent. Hey, hey everyone, he began, his voice wavering slightly. I... I'm in a bit of a situation here. The Morgans, the family I mentioned earlier, they're... they're after me. As Ethan spoke, the sound of muffled voices echoed down the hallway, sending a fresh wave of panic coursing through him. He strained to make out the words, the fear mounting with each passing second. They're... they're desperate, he continued, his voice barely audible over the rising panic. They're arguing. I think they're... I think they're starting to doubt each other. He glanced around the room, his eyes darting from shadow to shadow, as if expecting the Morgans to burst through the door at any moment. His breathing came in ragged gasps, the weight of his terror pressing down on him like a suffocating blanket. With a trembling hand, Ethan pocketed his phone and rose to his feet, his muscles tense with the anticipation of the final hunt. He knew he couldn't stay in the operating room forever, that eventually he would have to make a run for it. Taking a deep breath to steady his nerves, he crept towards the door, his senses on high alert. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of movement, sent a fresh wave of fear coursing through him. As he reached for the door handle, a sudden noise behind him made him freeze in place, his heart seizing in his chest. He turned slowly, his flashlight trembling in his hand, to find himself face to face with Paul Morgan his eyes gleaming with malice in the dim light. You thought you could hide from us, boy? Paul growled, his voice dripping with venom. You think you can escape? We own everything in here, and now that includes you. Ethan's blood ran cold as he realized he was trapped, with nowhere left to run. It was now or never, he knew, his only chance for survival lying in the desperate measures he would have to take to outwit the Morgans and make his escape. The basement of Mercy Hospital was a realm of shadows and echoes, a labyrinthine maze of forgotten corridors and crumbling walls. Ethan found himself at a dead end, once again face to face with the Morgan family. The flickering light of his flashlight cast eerie shadows on the faces of his pursuers. His heart pounded like a relentless drumbeat, the rhythm of fear echoing through the darkness. Ethan reactively slammed the door, creating a separation and a moment to slip away back into the darkness and avoid the family now eager for blood. Breathing heavily, Ethan leaned against the cold concrete, his mind racing as he contemplated his next move. The distant sound of footsteps grew louder, reverberating through the stale air like an approaching storm. The Morgans were closing in, their whispers of malice carried on the unseen currents of the night. With a trembling hand, Ethan reached for a rusted pipe lying nearby, his fingers curling around the cold metal with desperate determination. He knew he couldn't outrun them and couldn't try to hide forever in the shadows. The time for evasion had passed. Now was the time for confrontation. As if sensing his resolve, the footsteps quickened, the rhythmic cadence morphing into a frenzied crescendo. And then they appeared, like phantoms lurking in the darkness. Paul, his eyes wild with madness. Sarah, her lips curled into a twisted sneer. And Danny, his gaze vacant yet filled with a primal hunger. There was no time for words, no room for negotiation. With a guttural roar, Paul lunged forward, his massive frame igniting fear within Ethan. Adrenaline surged through Ethan's veins, his senses heightened to a razor's edge as he met Paul's charge head-on. The pipe became an extension of his will, a weapon forged in the crucible of survival, 
With each swing, he danced on the edge of oblivion, his movements a deadly ballet of desperation and defiance. Sarah and Danny joined the fray, their attacks relentless and merciless. But Ethan was no longer the frightened intruder stumbling through the darkness. He was a warrior, fighting for his life with every ounce of strength and cunning he possessed. He dodged, parried, and struck back with ferocious determination, his breath coming in ragged gasps as he pushed his body beyond its limits. The battle raged on, the basement echoing with the clash of metal and the cries of combatants locked in mortal struggle. Time seemed to blur, seconds stretching into eternity as Ethan fought against the encroaching darkness. And then, in a moment of sheer desperation, he saw his opportunity. A narrow gap between the crumbling walls, a sliver of light beckoning like a beacon of hope in the suffocating gloom. With one final surge of energy, Ethan broke free from the melee, his muscles screaming in protest as he sprinted towards the distant promise of escape. Behind him, the Morgans howled in fury, their voices a cacophony of rage and despair. But Ethan paid them no heed, his focus locked on the light ahead, his heart pounding with the promise of freedom. And then, with a burst of adrenaline-fueled strength, he burst through the crumbling wall, emerging into the cool night air like a phoenix rising from the ashes. He collapsed onto the ground, his body racked with exhaustion and triumph, his mind reeling from the chaos of battle. As the distant wail of police sirens pierced the silence, Ethan closed his eyes, the echoes of the night's horrors fading into the darkness. He had survived the confrontation, emerging victorious from the depths of Mercy Hospital's twisted heart. But the scars of battle would linger, a reminder of the thin line between life and death in a world consumed by shadows. The night air hung heavy with the remnants of fear, swirling around Ethan like a shroud, as he stood outside the abandoned Mercy Hospital. The flashing lights of police cars illuminated the darkness, casting eerie shadows against the crumbling facade of the building. Ethan's heart still raced, adrenaline coursing through his veins, as he recounted the harrowing events of the past hours. As the officers approached, Ethan stumbled forward, his legs trembling beneath him. He felt as though he had emerged from the depths of a nightmare, blinking in the harsh glare of reality. The weight of what had transpired pressed down on him, threatening to crush him under its unfathomable gravity. The police officers, their faces etched with concern, guided Ethan to safety, their words a distant murmur in his ears. He gave a brief, disjointed account of the night's horrors, his voice shaky and unsteady. He struggled to articulate the terror that had consumed him, the primal fear that had clawed its way into his soul and refused to let go. As they reached the safety of the police cars, Ethan's gaze lingered on the abandoned hospital, its darkened windows staring back at him like accusing eyes. He shuddered, unable to shake the feeling that the Morgan still lurked within those crumbling walls, waiting to ensnare the next unsuspecting victim. Back at the police station, Ethan sat alone in a small, dimly lit room, his hands trembling as he clutched a steaming cup of coffee. The events of the night played out in his mind like a twisted carousel, each terrifying moment etched into his memory with agonizing clarity. An officer entered the room and explained to him that even though it was a bad idea to roam the halls of the abandoned hospital, he was very lucky that he had been streaming. One of his viewers alerted the authorities upon seeing the danger he had been facing. Although they were still searching for the Morgans, they had not been able to locate them within the walls of Mercy Hospital. It appears his attackers had fled, once seeing the blue and red lights flashing on their approach. When the officer left the room, he closed his eyes, trying to banish the images that haunted him. The menacing glint in Paul's eyes, the manic desperation in Sarah's voice, the unpredictable rage of Danny. They were like ghouls, looming over him. Their presence a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of the world. Slowly, tentatively, Ethan opened his eyes, his gaze drawn to the reflection staring back at him in the dimly lit room. He looked different somehow, changed by the horrors he had witnessed, the terrors he had endured. But beneath the weariness and the fear, there was something else, something stronger, something resilient. With a sigh, Ethan pushed himself to his feet, his resolve hardening like steel within him. He knew that he would carry the scars of that night with him always, but he also knew that he would not let them define him. He was a survivor, a fighter, 
a beacon of light in a world shrouded in darkness. As he stepped out into the cool night air, a sense of peace washed over him, the weight of the past hours lifting from his shoulders like a heavy burden. He knew that the road ahead would be difficult, fraught with challenges and dangers beyond imagining, but he also knew that he would face them head on, with courage, with determination, with hope. For Ethan Cole, the urban explorer turned reluctant hero, the journey was far from over. But as he walked into the night, his heart filled with newfound resolve, he knew that he was ready to face whatever darkness lay ahead, and this time he would emerge victorious.